Hey guys, my name is Andrew Pecoraro from Pex Metal Picks. And I'm Andrew from Crown the Empire. All right, Andy, so my first question goes all the way back to the beginning when you, Brandon, and Hayden started the band in 2011, mm -hmm. and you guys were all still in high school, right? Yep. So how did you come out with the Limitless EP, which seriously like blew people away when you were so young and <laughs> so quickly? Um, for us, that EP was what really kind of put us on the map at all you know it was all self-produced self you know self-made we had a just a local group of people in Dallas a guy named Jeff Rockwell who, who actually worked on the album but uh our friend Brendan who uh we played a show with he was in a band called Disco Curtis at MySpace when MySpace was around <laughs> was like yo there's this cool way to promote and honestly it seems like everybody does it now like it shouldn't be like this big secret but it was just like spamming kids essentially just being like hey heard you like this band we make this kind of music check it out and yeah. just following through with that eight hours a day, every single day after school. Dang. So that's literally how we pushed, we prom we promoted, we made videos. Um, it was called Limitless. We were we were we had this message where it was just like, you know, messages were super cool. So we were like, we have to have a message that has to stand for something. So it was just like, you know, uh, everybody's coming overcoming obstacles. We're taking a risk by joining the band and making music. So. Yeah, and then after that came out, you guys pretty much got picked up by Rise like four months later. Was it, that just so it wasn't, insane? It wasn't even four months. It was literally the same day the EP came out. We got helped by four record labels. Oh, uh, I guess I'm just talking yeah, about when you got no, officially signed. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying is those deals take forever to go through. We had management contracts and stuff like that. Yeah, my next question was just going to be what the process was like. I mean, you guys were like still in high school, yeah, right? Yeah, so, actual 17. So like this is me knowing literally nothing about the music industry um, and just getting an email on the band email five separate ones from five different record labels asking us you know uh, where do you see yourself in five years and you know I don't want to throw out names now but some of them were like substantially like huge but we ended up going with Rise because it just it had the best deal for us you know we had lawyers look over it and like I couldn't even sign the contract my mom signed <laughs> it for me because I was still 17 so dang that's so wild man yeah um, so then what basically my next question is just what point did you guys know I mean, even after you got signed, that's fine. Um, that you really made it, and that you guys were gonna blow up and like actually be a big band. <laughs> we're we're not even like our scope of things isn't nearly the same as it was when we first got started. Like to us, we're not we're not big at all. Like it's so funny, like <laughs> thinking like of, of big bands when I was sixteen and big bands now. It's like. I mean, like, okay, how about this? I went to one show where you guys were probably, like, the second opener, so pretty early on, and yeah. you guys had a bigger crowd than the headliner. <laughs> like, like kids showed up just to watch you guys. Yeah, power of the internet, man. Yeah. Like, honestly, it was it's, it's so common now with, like, Vine and YouTube and everything like that, where, yeah, we could tour for, like, six months straight and play in front of 50,000 people, or we could make one YouTube video and have, like... Two million hits or something, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Works All right, so we'll move on to, like, 2012. Um, at what point did you guys decide you wanted to bring on another vocalist, and then how did you settle on having that be David? Um, originally, it was just just a, uh, you know, to, to make sure that we were as solid as we could be. You know, vocally, I, I didn't really have any technique. I didn't have any experience touring at all, so when I screamed, my voice was shot after a couple shows, and nobody wants to go to a show and be like, Wow, this guy's awful. You yeah, know, he sounds great. Sound yeah, so we uh, we were looking for a new member after that, and then Dave was just the one that was local. He was in Dallas. You know, we we looked at people all over YouTube, but Dave was just the best one. He happened to be the closest to us, so he didn't join originally. He said no, but after <laughs> after after a little bit of you know <clears throat> grinding him and stuff, it finally convinced him to join, and then you know it's been ir irreplaceable since. Was it weird hearing him do the screams like the first couple times around? Uh, no, because we had heard him, you know, and he sounds like a monster. Without a microphone, even, like, he could just do it in a room and people would be terrified. So I, I knew for sure that he was the one that we wanted. Okay, it seems like more and more recently you guys have kind of been sharing vocal responsibilities. You've been doing some screaming and he's been doing some singing. Yeah. Um, at live shows, even before you started doing it on new albums. Yeah. Um, where did that come from? Um, well, with with the writing, it, it started pretty... Uh, you know, pretty late in the game. Oh, hey, dude. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, it's a GoPro. It's wide, wide okay, angle. Well, well, so you couldn't even avoid it if you tried. <laughs> all right. Um, but uh, no, it, all of we started uh, picking up, you know, on each other's where we had strong suits and where we had our weaknesses. And then also different dynamics, you know. It's like easiest way to put it is like Blink-182, you know, Tom and uh, fucking 
with Mark Hoppus, they, they have different. Yeah, different, where they bring different, different things size. to the band. Yeah, yeah, you know, like both. volumes, all these bands yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I guess my next question would just be: Did you miss screaming? Did I miss it? Like, I know you said you didn't have a technique, apparently, but like, did you miss that like heavier part of it? Yeah, definitely. There's like that element of like primal, like it's coming from your body. You know, there's something like that's just like ah, like gets your blood <laughs> pumping, gets you stoked, and so. And did David yeah. have uh, any background singing, or did he kind of learn and just wing it? No, he he said he'd been singing, you know, for forever, but had only been recognized for his, you know, his mm-hmm. screaming. But he's been getting better and better, um, practicing forever and ever, and so he's, you know, he's gotten he's improved a bunch. So we want to incorporate that singing into the new album as well. I'm not sure how much um, you'd be willing to say on this next topic. It's basically just about Ben leaving. I know the quote was internal dynamic differences. Yeah, it always is. Is there, like, can you expand on that at all? Was it the direction of the music and he had other stuff in mind? Yeah, or? it was always that. I mean, <clears throat> it just seemed like we didn't, you know, when you live with somebody for, you know, four years straight, and you're with like you're like this far away from them at all times, like how do you not get to know that person? You know, yeah. it's just like it seems like a foreign concept, but it always seemed like there was a barrier just between, hey, everybody was going out to do this, you want to come? And you'd be like, no, you know, I'm gonna chill here. And so, maybe personality or you know, I couldn't tell you. It was honestly it was so abrupt. Yeah, but but then at the same time, like, how abrupt was it really? Because it seemed like he had sort of been planning his exit for a while. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, being absent from stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to give him an opportunity to like think about it, do his thing, and then yeah, he was just like, oh, all right, I, I'm out of here. So yeah, yeah, you know, that's enough of that. Yeah. Um, one thing I've noticed about Rise lately, going to the record label, is they've been re-releasing yeah. like pretty much as much stuff as they can, and you guys have literally yeah. re-released yeah. everything oh, you put yeah. out. Everything. Um, I mean, I get the Limitless EP because you got Dave, and that was super sick. Yeah. But uh, yeah. is that something they make you do or you want to do? You know what? It is the one label pushing thing where, like, they're a business. You know, they're always – that's always what record labels have been. So even though we, you know, we'll be kicking and screaming behind the scenes and stuff about it, uh, they're the ones that make the albums happen. You know, you got to make them happy. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And it's, you know, if – would there's you there's guys... usually more content on them, you know, we had like the release of the resistance, we had a couple of new songs and, you know, stuff that we've been working on, but yeah. I don't know, that's pretty meh. Would me you too. guys rather just be forging ahead, making new music yeah, all the time? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I feel like everybody, but you know, it's just like way of the world situation. Yeah. Um all right, so sorta of moving into like the new album area, what does the musical future of Crown the Empire sound like? Well, I know it's we've really spent, broad. Yeah, we spent a lot of time working on what that is because honestly, we had no identity with ourselves. You know, we'd just been making songs that we liked, and it was like across every type of genre. We had like super heavy songs. We had super like no screaming songs. So, um, that's been that's been the question this whole time: is what, who are we? What do we sound like? You know, to where we really are unique. And for sure, it's like the cinematic, the cinematic vibes we bring to it. You know, there's always it, it could be under a movie. There's always like these score elements and i think that's one thing that we've always had and what people appreciate we just want to get better at it you guys will still be doing like the theatrical elements that in the right way you know maybe not like dressing up but there's definitely (laughs) there has to be that element okay Um, otherwise it's not crown you know yeah all right i don't want to push this on you or uh talk bad about any bands but with the second album and more specifically with cross our bones and prisoners of war i just have to ask are you guys going to be going sort of like the bring me the horizon of mice and men we came as romans route where you continually get softer from here um you know what it's it's hard to say you know it's not like it's not like any of those bands were like this is it this is where we're not heavy (laughs) you know they're just it's been a gradual change for i think every band who's who's done it you know you've seen bring the horizon from the first album to this album is like unrecognizable yeah as a band but i think that's sort of the heart of the question is like the fans like me who've been following you guys from 2011 are you gonna become an unrecognizable band compared to what you used to be no no that's not no that'll never happen all right yeah for sure i mean that that's good to hear yes i mean i'd be so sad to lose you guys yeah but what is like what is what does that like encapsule like, i guess I just because we, we've to... always had pianos like our very first ep oh, had like yeah. leave me out of the dark which is just like straight singing but then we also had like voices on that and that was 
we got shit for voices originally came out like when it first came out everybody hated it because the vocoder in the beginning sounds like autotune mm -hmm. and so they're like oh it's autotune it was like fuck this band <laughs> so right out the gate everybody hated us so it's it's weird to see the transition of what is what everybody wants and what they perceive us as and like yeah. so i just want to know what is that to you what are we as long as you guys have some amount of screaming yeah. i'll be happy enough okay i mean there's people who are like oh just listen to limitless if you want you know go back to the yeah. old stuff if you want heaviness but it's like that's not what the people fell in love with when they first listened to the band though yeah right you know um, that's then i get what you're saying so for me as long as a, like any amount of that remains i'll be happy and i know cool. a lot of people will yeah. so that's that's good to hear man yeah definitely um, we'll keep that there's definitely there's a ton of screaming on the on the new album too so all right you don't have to worry don't worry about it yeah, I'm so relieved, <laughs> but like seriously. All right, so kind of winding down. The new album, um, what can you say about it? Title, number of songs, when it'll be released? Um, looking like the name is going to be Mercury, and look for it this summer. That's pretty much all we got. I heard it ha it's going to have to do sort of with like a space theme. I know you guys are going away from like the story mode yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah, but... there's no story to it. There's just, you know, the, like we said, the theme, the overall theme of the album is all cohesive okay sure. uh sort of last question a couple days ago the warp tour lineup got leaked from somewhere in las vegas i think and your name is on it yep uh are you allowed to confirm or deny yeah warp i'm allowed tour? to confirm we're on we're on they All just right. announced it today so that get is out there. yeah excellent. get the word out we're on uh third year it's been the wildest tour i've ever done it's been like the hardest tour i've ever done but i'm super excited to be back Sweet man, I'm so stoked to see you guys on there. That's gonna um, be so shitty, but in a good way. Like it's gonna be like, yeah, awesome. it's gonna be intense. It'll be, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know <laughs> you good. mean, like a lot of work. Yeah. Um, all right, so I guess just last thing, do you have any question or any uh, comments for the fans? Anything you want to say? Um, thanks for all the love, following us thus far. If um, if you haven't listened to us, give us our new album listen coming out this summer. So, all right, guys, thanks so much. Thanks to Andy from Crown the Empire. Catch him on Warp Tour and keep an eye out for the new album Mer Mercury.